cell growth, okay? So plant cells are just like animal cells in lots of ways. They have a nucleus and chromosomes, they have all those good inner organelles, blah, blah, blah. We don't really care about that. We want to know how are they different from animal cells. So the key differences in plant cells, right? Plants have really big vacuoles. Imagine like a baggie inside of the cell that holds a ton of water, okay? Because water is super important for plants. We'll learn more about exactly why much later, but we're going to talk a little bit about it today. Two, they have a rigid cell wall that surrounds the cell membrane, okay? And this makes plant cells stack up like little blocks, okay? And part of what keeps, they need this rigid cell wall, right? Because it's part of what keeps the plant cells shape. And then the Water in the vacuoles is part of what like maintains the pressure inside the cell that keeps that shape. So these two, these two things are working together. And then finally, plant cells have plastids. All right, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about plastids. So plastids, plants have all different kinds of plastids, but the one that you probably know the most of is the chloroplast, right? The chloroplast is where photosynthesis is happening. It's got chlorophyll in it yada 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 but the thing of it is plants can make a make a, a a chloroplast and then it can turn the chloroplast into an amyloplast which is a plastid that doesn't have any pigment in it and it's just carrying little grains of starch right and it can also take a chloroplast and turn it into a chromoplast right which is a type of um plastid that has uh fats and lipids in it and um it's got it is it's also not green and what's super trippy is plants can like swap back and forth if you've ever had a potato that got too much light on it it starts to turn green on the skin and that's because potatoes are full of amyloplasts right and they the, once they get exposed to light the amyloplasts will be like whoa hey i can photosynthesize i'm gonna turn into a chloroplast and so they'll actually shift and they'll start to become a chloroplast and they'll have chlorophyll on them um also they make some other things that are not great for you if you do that so don't eat green potatoes not good for you and then chromoplasts right are in flowers and fruits and they signal right that they're gonna the plant is is getting ripe if it's a fruit, right? Um, and it's ready for something to come and eat it and it spread its seeds. Plant cells also have something crazy called the plasmodesmata. Um, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is because if plant cells are these little individual blocks, right, that are separate from each other, if you've got chloroplasts that are doing photosynthesis and manufacturing sugar, right, well, if it's just inside one cell, then you're not going to be able to grow as a plant, right? Because you've got to be able to take that sugar, move it outside of your cell, move it all around, break it down, do all the things you need to be able to do to survive as a plant, right? So they have these things called plasmodesmata, which are openings, right, between cells, and they actually allow manufactured food to get transported from one cell to the next and that's that's a super cool thing it's kind of like the 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 highway for plants for moving things another really important plant structure i want to mention is something called the stomata and the stomata are on the leaves of the plant and sometimes the stems mostly the leaves though and basically they're like this is a blow up of one here it's like a little mouth on a leaf Sometimes you can see these if you look at pine trees, but they like they they take in carbon dioxide and then they give off water vapor and oxygen and they open and close based on water pressure in the plant. And as you're going to see, water is really, really important um, in all of this, because if you don't have enough water pressure, then your stomata are going to be closed, which then means you can't take in carbon dioxide, which then means you can't do photosynthesis. So all of this is pretty crucial. So plant growth is it's controlled and influenced by light, water, um, what's available in the soil. It's also within the plant uh, controlled by hormones. 
weather has a factor on it. All of these things like play a part in plant growth. So plants are annuals, which means that they sprout, grow, reproduce, and die in one year. You got to get your plant game on and be done. They can be a biannual, which means they spend the first year growing and then the second year they reproduce and then they die back. Or you can be a perennial, periannual, right? Which means you live for a whole bunch of years. And most plants are perennials, right? If you're going to maximize your lifespan and since plants can't move around, right? Like being able to be in one place and staking out that place over a long period of time is usually a really great strategy if you're a plant. And perennials are either herbaceous, which means they grow back their green part each year, or they're woody. And if you're a woody perennial, you either are an evergreen, right? Which means you keep your year, leaves year round, okay? So think rhododendrons, pine trees, Christmas trees, right? Or deciduous, which means you lose your leaves um, during the winter or during the dry season, okay? Plants um, have the tissue inside of them for moving water and manufactured food. The xylem tissue is made up of cells that have a lot of lignin in their cell wall, and that helps them carry water because lignin is hydrophobic, water doesn't stick to it, um, and then phloem tissue, which carries manufactured food, the sap of the plant, okay, the sugary part of the plant. So woody plants make more water carrying tissue than food carrying tissue, okay? A lot more water carrying tissue. Secondary xylem, which is the xylem that's made after your first year of growth if you're a woody plant, is called wood. So if I'm looking at all of this cross section, this is all wood, all of this here, all the way across it, that's all wood. Okay, and then they make secondary phloem, it's called cork or bark. And so that is out here, right? Their inner bark, right, is right here, okay? So over time, that inner xylem tissue, it, it's no longer actively transporting water and it dies and it's called then heartwood and in a lot of plants it's actually a different color and then the outer xylem is current xylem is called sapwood now this is super confusing and i'm sorry i wish it wasn't like this but this is all xylem tissue okay the part of this that is actually carrying phloem is way the heck out here right out at the edge okay so that's yeah, I wish it wasn't like that, but it is. So heartwood contains resins, phenols, terpenes, and from the plant's point of view, those are those are manufactured to repel insects so that it doesn't eat the plant from the inside out. But if you remember our Shinrin Yoku reading, right, they specifically mention phenols and terpenes as being one of the things that have an impact, a positive impact on human health, right? Um, they've been used in medicine. It's important in construction because um, some woods, right, are better for building, you know, closets with that are going to repel insects and other woods. They're also, of course, used in um, wine and alcohol manufacturing. I mean, that's how wines get their flavors, just from the phenols and the resins and the terpenes that are in the barrels that it's, uh, that it's manufactured in. And so they're important. I mentioned this because they're important for humans. So let's put this all together, right? Here's a cross section of wood and um, there is not actively growing xylem, which is the heartwood. And then there is the actively growing xylem, which is the sap wood. Remember, this is all wood. If I call it wood, that means xylem. And then in between these two things, this little thing here says vascular cambium. Vascular cambium is one cell thick and it is a set of cells that continuously grows and it makes xylem cells on one side and phloem cells on the other side. So this is where our phloem would be, right? And this is where you're carrying your sap. And then out here you have your periderm, your outer bark, uh, and then you have a little bit of inner bark. So this is how, if you're going to tap a tree to get, for example, sap out of it, 
so like maple syrup sap, um, you would tap in to just this part here uh, in the springtime when the sap starts to run back up the tree, and then you would collect that sap and then boil it to make maple syrup. It's also how they get rubber from trees, from rubber trees. Uh, they tap into the sap and they collect the sap from it. So the study of woody plants is called dendrology, and you can study climate by studying tree rings. Uh, when you have a really wet year, you'll make more wood, you'll make more xylem. And when you have a really dry wood year, you'll make less xylem. So the size of the ring it will be determined by the availability of water. Okay. Finally, this last slide, I hope you have a chance to go and look at this link. This is a composer who set up a way to read tree rings with a laser and then translate those rings into notes and then use it to make a recording of a tree's 